Um, I kept a lot of pets as a child. Uh, my father was a herbalist and a pharmacist, so I learned a lot of plants from him, and he had a microscope laboratory at home. So I had an immersion, really, in the kind of natural history type of biology. Um, so I did biology at school, um, and I liked it. Uh, but I did notice that the first thing we did in our biology classes was kill what we were studying. So biology is meant to be the science of life, but uh, I soon realized it's actually the science of death because you kill everything and cut it up. In those days, we did a lot of dissection. I think nowadays they do less in schools. Um, and then I wanted to read um, science at Cambridge, so I, I did more biology at Cambridge. But I began to feel it was all too limited. I mean, it seemed to leave out all the things that most interested me. Um, which is why, when I had a chance to go to Harvard and do history and philosophy of science, I welcomed this chance to step back a bit and look at the bigger picture, um, which I did. Um, and when I did that, it was soon after Thomas Kuhn's famous book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, had come out. And what Kuhn shows in that book is that at any given time in the world of science, there's a shared model of reality, a paradigm, he called it. Um, and then there are periods of revolutionary change when the paradigm shifts, people move to a completely different model of reality. The best known example, of course, is the move in the 16th and 17th century from the idea that the Earth is at the center of the universe to the idea that the sun is at the center of the solar system, the Copernican revolution. And Darwin's theory of evolution is another one. Uh, quantum physics is another one. Um, but the biology is based on the mechanistic theory of life, the idea that living organisms are machines. Uh, they're inanimate mechanisms. Um, they don't have feelings, they don't really have intelligence, they don't have consciousness. Um, all this seemed to me completely implausible, having kept dogs and cats and birds and, and, and looked, you know, and, and liking animals, spending a lot of time with them. The idea they were just automata seemed to me completely implausible. And so when I discovered that this paradigm, this model, this mechanistic theory of nature, might just be a temporary model rather than ultimate truth, which is the way it was taught to me. Um, I got quite excited. Science could change. It could be telling us something different. Continue watching this fascinating conversation for free by clicking on the link below to visit our website, learn from the best minds in the world, and connect with a community of passionate people building the best versions of themselves. Just click on the link below and I'll see you on the inside.